Welcome to Richmond Park for this SSE Tristy League encounter between St. Patrick's Athletic and Finn Harps. It's a dark evening. There's dark clouds in the sky. The rain for the moment is holding off. We're told we're going to get rain at some point this weekend. We don't know quite when. Let's hope it isn't for the next couple of hours. The stadium filling up nicely as St. Patrick's Athletic looks to continue their chase after the European spots for Finn Harps. It's all about looking below them to see what the UCD are doing and to see if they can stay above them. There's a slim chance they could survive automatically, but that would require a bit of a fallout in Drogheda and quite frankly doesn't look like that's going to happen. Crossing and finishing during the week and we had a little ward reach he seems like a really nice humble guy as well so wish him every, uh, every success in the future. If I was that good at any sport that young the last thing I'd be is humble so fair play to him. Exactly, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Breslin looking for Doyle inside a step over Forrester! 1-0 St. Patrick's Athletic Forrester with his third of the season. Well, Doyle knew exactly what he was doing when he stepped over that one. He must have heard the shout from Forrester, and Forrester slotted it home. You said it before the game, Keith. He wanted more goals from Forrester, and he has stepped up tonight. Atakai has to go back outside. Forrester is an option, as is Breslin. Lennon. Curtis, the 16-year-old from Navin. Tenth appearance of the league tonight. Cotter who's been excellent since arriving on loan from Shamrock Rovers. Back to Cotter it goes. Cotter trying to tie Don and up and out to Cotter with the pullback. It's bouncing around. And Breslin gets his first for St. Patrick's Athletic. And they're absolutely cruising. Well, the only criticism that you can level at Breslin since the start of the season is that he hasn't got on the score sheet. That has now been amended. Who do we need to lock on to? Well, from the neutral point of view, this game may be slightly off-Broadway this evening compared to the main show elsewhere, but for Pats, it's a huge game. As Finn Harps get a goal back to McNamee. Mac Woods did some hard running, got it across to McNamee, and McNamee, completely unmarked, sent it home. We've got a game on our hands. Yeah, just as I said, Eric McWoods was looking a bit disinterested. He goes and puts it on a play for McNamee. It's really good play here. He manages to turn. I think it's Brockbank. Brockbank's just not strong enough, gets too tight. And Redmond comes out to try and address the danger, but it's a great ball across the six-yard box. And Boyle away, O'Reilly. Boyle. McWoods again running hard. Mihailovic, McNamee cushions it out to McWoods. McWoods pulls it back, McNamee! Luckily for Rodgers, it came straight at him because either side, and he may have been in trouble. Yeah, again, it's that man, McWoods. He's just coming more and more into the game, becoming a thorn in the St. Pat's side. Again, McNamee just manages to get on the end, just can't get a clean enough strike. Mark Doyle, desperately unlucky to be sent off a couple of times. And I know this is a bit of a cliche, generally not that kind of player. Here's Owen Doyle. Good save by McKeown. Lennon, Lennon has a go, which McEwen saves, and Doyle couldn't follow in. What McEwen an excellent with a double point save. Blank save. O'Reilly, the first one you'd expect him to make, the second was something more special, although, and I don't want to be too critical, I think Mark Doyle shot straight at him. Rob Jones sends it on, Boyle into the box. Well, it didn't even reach the box in the end. McGing, Redmond, flicked on by Mark Doyle. Adam O'Reilly, oh, that is a little bit wild for McGing. Well, the yellow card is out, but when you put your foot up like, oh, it's red, it's straight red, and rightfully so. I don't think he could have any arguments with that. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, in real time machine, it did look a little bit high, you see, he goes in with the slide and he lifts his leg up a little bit higher. Well, I thought Forrester might go for it because once again the keeper was off his line. Olave made the run, but he didn't check it. And that's it, St. Patrick's Athletic win a fourth game on the bounce and keep their European hopes alive. A victory that they deserve.
I think so, just slightly. I think Finn Harps will come here, they'll be coursing that look, thinking they could have got something out of the game. There is a scenario where that could have happened, but for me, Pats just managed to, managed to keep Finn Harps at arm's length all night. Yeah, listen, it's three points, that's the main thing. Um, we we'll probably make it a little bit difficult for ourselves. We've gone 2 0 up, two very good goals from our, our behalf, and um, I can see the sloppy one to throw in. We get rolled, and then um, there's a little bit of miscommunication on the back post between uh, Sam and Barry, and uh, Barry McNamee gets a tap in, and it just put ourselves under a little bit more pressure than we probably should have been. And then I think in the second half, we'd maybe three, four chances to actually kill the game off and not getting this, the third goal sort of makes every ball into the box a little bit more edgy. But uh, no, listen, three points is the main thing, and, and that's what we're going to bring forward next week.